Hello, my name is Tara Melfi, Program Coordinator for the HIV Primary Care and Prevention Center of Excellence at the Clinical Education Initiative. Joining me today is Dr. Sanjib Shah. Dr. Shah is an attending physician at Gotham Health, Governor New York City Health and Hospitals. Today, Dr. Shah will be reviewing the New York State Department of Health guidelines on HIV testing in honor of National HIV Testing Day, which is on June 27, 2020. National HIV Testing Day was first observed on June 27, 1995 to encourage people to get tested for HIV, know their status, and get linked to care and treatment. So thank you so much today for joining me to discuss these guidelines. My pleasure. How often should HIV screening be performed in individuals who engage in high-risk behavior, and what about those who do not engage in high-risk behavior? Everyone over the age of 13, uh, regardless of risk, should be tested at least once. Uh, if a person has had risk behavior, they should be tested at least annually. And data for persons using PrEP uh, indicate that HIV and STI screening every three months improves the ability in those populations to diagnose and treat high-risk people rapidly. Also, the threshold for screening a person from a high community viral population is lower. All that being said, unfortunately, many people at high risk for HIV are not getting tested every year. In one report, seven in 10 people at high risk for acquiring HIV were not tested for HIV in the past year and saw a primary care provider during that time, and more than three quarters are not offered a test. So I think, to me, that emphasizes the notion of having a guideline that, that really emphasizes testing someone at, at risk at least annually. Great, thank you. And what is the best test to use for HIV screening? Well, HIV testing has gone through several generations of lab testing. The first and second generation tests screen for IgG antibodies to HIV, which could take many weeks to fully develop. Then we had the third generation test, which added IgM antibody, which but can still take weeks to third generation test was that if you screen positive, you had to follow up with a pretty cumbersome Western blot test that detected antibody band to several viral components and was often negative or indeterminate during early or acute infection. So now the gold standard test for screening is the fourth generation test, which incorporates both HIV antigen and IgM and IgG antibody testing. Now the inclusion of the HIV antigen or P24 allows much earlier detection of infection. The P24 antigen turns positive around day 10 or 11 after infection, thereby closing the gap between infection and diagnosis. We now know that identifying and treating HIV as soon as possible after infection is a critical step in achieving viral suppression for the individual. It helps retention in care and prevention of transmission of HIV to others. Can you talk through the HIV testing algorithm and the appropriate follow-up scenarios? Sure. Um, so as the graphic in front of you shows, the first part of the test looks for antigen antibodies either positive or negative. If the antigen antibody test is negative, you're done, except for one caveat, which I'll come back to in a moment. If the antigen antibody test is positive, the test incorporates an HIV-1 versus HIV-2 differentiation antibody assay. Most people will be diagnosed with HIV-1, but don't forget the possibility of HIV-2. To add some context here, in one nationwide surveillance study, fewer than 200 HIV-2 infections had been diagnosed in the United States almost half in New York City, and most had a connection to West Africa. Now, if both the differentiation antibody tests are negative, the lab will reflexively complete a nucleic acid test, NAT for short, or an HIV RNA viral load. And if the NAT is positive, then you're dealing with acute HIV infection. If the NAT is negative, you could be dealing with a false positive result. Now to the caveat I mentioned earlier. If a patient has signs and symptoms consistent with acute HIV infection, such as fever, rash, sore throat, swollen glands, you may wish to order both an HIV antigen antibody test and also an HIV viral load test, 
in case the person is in the very, very early stages of infection where the P24 has yet to turn positive. What would be a main take home message you would like New York State clinicians to know about this topic? Yeah, my message would be whether it's the Centers for Disease Control or the United States Preventive Services Task Force or New York State all recommend that clinicians screen for HIV infection in adolescents and adults. The important thing is follow this guidance on HIV testing and really be part of the generation that helped end the HIV epidemic.